Hello, movie friends. Welcome back to the show. This is Anthony. And this is James. And to continue our month of spooky episodes, Ooh. we're going to do the top 25 vampire movies of all time. And this is, you know, a list that we put together. And there are a ton of vampire films that have been made. Maybe only a couple great ones. Maybe only one great one or two. But in general, it's a very fun genre. People have a, an affinity towards vampires. They're alluring. They're like they're sexy. The, there's immortality involved. It's something that we all kind of want, like the traits of vampires. Not, but outside of their doomed necessity of sucking blood from human beings, but <laughs> it's they're pretty cool folklore. We were actually gonna originally do vampires versus werewolves, but. We end up discovering that there aren't that many good werewolf movies. Yeah, just like a hand, like three, maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas there are a ton of great vampire movies, and um, but like you said, I think there are only a couple of really, really great ones. But there are a lot of good ones, and yeah. vamp- vampires are my favorite monster. I think they're really cool, really fascinating. Uh, How come they're your favorite monster, Anthony? Because you know the immortality, the the that n- evil nature. It's enticing. Know, it's, it is enticing. They're, they're like heroes and villains at the same time. They're like an anti-hero. They're um, they're sexy. That's the thing. Yeah. They're always sexy in film. Nosferatu, no, not a, well, actually super sexy. Nosferatu, super <laughs> tall, <laughs> pale, weird face. Love it. Yeah, <laughs> but um, those the, long fingers. Yeah, <laughs> but the, the I love the history of vampires, and it go, they go back to. Uh, 15th century and 14th century uh, Eastern Europe, very similar to witches in Salem and witches in Europe where uh, un- unsolved murders and curious cases uh, terrified people and they looked for explanations and vampires were actually a common explanation for odd occurrences and there were vampire witch hunts and they were just as big as witch hunts in like early America in, or in, in the 1600s in Europe. Like people were being accused of being vampires, and it was actually a phenomenon in Eastern and eventually in Western Europe. And the original like name for the vampire is Strigoi, which comes from obviously um, Russia, and that was what people first called them. That's what they call them in um, the strain. Yeah, Strigoi. That's where he got it from. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's the original. Which term. is like Guillermo del Toro and um, what's his name. Uh, Jeff, no, not Jeff. Jeff Lee, um, De- uh, yeah, Dennis Lee. Yeah, well, yeah, well, that those books are yeah. great. Oh no, no, no those saying. are great vampire books. Yeah. Um, but I think that also uh, the what I've heard is it comes from Vlad the Impaler, who was that's uh, where Dracula comes. So from. So that's where Dracula yeah. comes from. But it also maybe the name. Okay, yeah, you're right. That's so. Yeah, Dracula comes from Vlad the Impaler, who was a a conquistador and, and a ruler, and he would uh, impale his enemies. Conquistador. Well, he would like conquer lands. Yeah. yeah. And he would, because isn't conquistador re- referring to Spanish culture? I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. But he would uh, have his men shave the tips of trees to sh- in po- to sharpen points, and they would trim off all the branches, and then they would stick his enemies or people he was punishing on top of the tip of the tree by their butthole, and then they would slowly, over time, gravity would pull them down and impale them slowly, and that would be probably the most painful death imaginable. Yeah, he was born in Transylvania, Romania, ruled Wallachia, Romania, off and on from 1456 to 1462, and according to legend, Vlad Dracula enjoyed dining amidst his dying victims and dipping his bread in their blood, so all these weird, (laughs) gory rumors, stories, probably not true, maybe just created for folklore and for fear over control over people, but you know, have spread and still... These things that are relevant today, like eating, like drinking blood. Yeah, it is a common misconception that uh, vampires began in tra- in Transylvania or in Romania. The first ever case of um, of when, a- when you cross your hands, you're about to tell me some truth bombs. <laughs> like you, I can always tell, it. he's like squeezing his fingers. Like, well, fingers. actually, uh, <laughs> uh, vampires are dated back to about twelve fifty six hundred AD. <laughs> well, the first ever. Uh, <laughs> Even the voice. See, I told you this. The voice is spot on. The first ever registered case of a strigoi was actually in Croatia in the early 1500s, and it was um. There's this village that uh, so apparently they were tormented. Hold on, season. <coughs> you okay there? You I transforming? Ch- I choked on water. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to hold it in for so long. I thought you were gonna sneeze. <laughs> and so um, in this village, they apparently were being tormented in the evenings by. Um, so, so someone would knock on doors, and then the person whose door was knocked on, they would end up being dead in, within a few days. And there were lots of odd occurrences happening in the village and lots of unexplained deaths. And then the villagers uh, came up to the conclusion that it was um, caused by a man who had died 13 years previously. That's the only conclusion. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> why, why not? <laughs> why investigate? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, they, they, so apparently they dug up his grave 
and they found a perfectly uh, a perfect corpse, like not a, a day had faded on it in 13 years' time had passed since With he was buried. Not even fresh dirt when they yeah. went to bur- unbury yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And so what happened was they they took they stuck a stake through its heart, and then they cut off his head, and then that stopped all the murders from happening. Yeah, okay. But, but that's you know that's just folklore. Yeah, that, but, that's, but that's the first ever case of like a night dwelling. Cr- um, humanoid person creature that sucks the blood off of other people. What about Gollum? Well, I mean, just kidding. Let's. Anyways, <laughs> that was a, that joke was a dud. Hey, that was not a joke. That was that was just a, an honest question. <laughs> Since you're the expert on dwelling, well, when was when was Lord of the Rings? You're, you're the expert on when was when was Lord of the Rings written. No, I mean when it takes place. But I mean, since you're the expert on dark dwelling creatures, since you are one yourself, like. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, before we continue, the best way to support Raiders of Lost podcast is to share with your family and friends and become a patron at patreon.com slash Raiders of Lost podcast. Patrons get perks like personalized videos, podcast schedules, top tier get patrons get a monthly shout out on the podcast. And the best perk of all is every patron has access to our weekly bonus episodes, which post every Wednesday. In this episode, we will also feature our top tier Patreon shout out. So stay tuned at the end of the episode to hear your name called. Head on over to our new website, Raiders of the Lost Podcast.com, to check out all of our sources of content, our merch, our movie posters. Thank you for following and listening wherever you are around the world. Subscribe wherever you're listening and watching. And thanks so much. But uh, all right, let's get back to to the show but hey you know what with when it comes to bad jokes we have that theory where <laughs> you're gonna have some bad eggs if you're gonna have some yeah eggs. you don't bat a thousand yeah yeah yeah, yeah no you're, uh, you're a very funny guy but every once in a while it doesn't i land. bat like 780 yeah yeah that's a good average yeah it's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> well i'm like i'm batting 500 today we had the good joke then the bad joke you're doing great thanks pal <laughs> and and vampires they have you know we know their strengths you know immortal and they're strong and you know they always uh, look young, but they have a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> I choked on water again. <laughs> Take it easy, man. <laughs> Listen to this guy. He's dying. I'm sorry. Just like I don't know why I can't stop laughing looking at you right now. Because <laughs> because you're just like so into vampires. I love vampires. You're like you're like giddy. You have this. Giant... I told you I was excited. He has, he has an ear to ear grin on his face that hasn't left since we started the episode. You were like sick in the head. I told you I was excited for this episode. But their weaknesses, so obviously silver and garlic in the wooden stake, but those are the famous ones in sunlight. But silver and garlic, because both garlic and silver have antibacterial properties, and so that's why they are sensitive to it, because it affects them faster than it would, you know, a normal human body. But also, another weakness of theirs is, and that's this goes back to ancient folklore, is if you drop, if you drop a bucket of grain or sand in, at your doorstep or in front of a vampire, they are compelled to count every single grain of rice, and th- they will allow you to escape. And so, in Eastern Europe, it's pretty obvious why we've never seen that in a film. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty boring. boring. <laughs> but in Eastern Europe, villagers would, when they were afraid of vampires, they would pour grain uh, buckets of sand outside their doorsteps to to keep the vampires distracted until daylight. Mm, it's pretty good. Yeah. I I love some other stuff where vampires can only be invited into your home like stuff like that I, mm-hmm. I like that stuff it's fun it's kind of like a metaphor for like inviting evil into your home yeah you know what i mean it doesn't make any physical sense in terms of like the world but i think it's a metaphor for allowing an evil to enter into your doorstep anyways how about we dive into our 25 top vampire films no how about how s- about we sink our teeth into it we'll sink our teeth into it <laughs> <laughs> let's begin with i think is the best vampire movie ever made, and that's Let the Right One In, which is also remade into Let Me In in 2010. The original is 2008, and actually Matt Reeves made the remake, Let Me In, which stars Chloe Grace Moretz. Mm-hmm. And um, it's about this young boy named Oscar, and he's kind of like a forgotten kid. He's a bullied boy, and he kind of lives he lives alone. He, I mean, he has he's the only child in his family, and... He meets this young girl who lives in the same apartment complex, but, you know, she has very odd behaviors, and he learns that she's a vampire, basically. And in the story, it's fascinating. It's just like a a horror love story. But I think what I love about this film so much is the realism they brought to what would it, like, really be like most realistically for a vampire to be around us. It's an amazing movie, and the the production's fantastic. And I I think it's definitely the best vampire movie ever made. And it's really about this relationship between two people. Um, they both have difficult lives, and 
Uh, it's it's a really haunting film. The vampire stuff is great. Like some of the best vampire kills and attacks, um, and they grounded what it's like to be a vampire like when she walks into the the apartment without being welcomed in she starts bleeding from every orifice in her body really disturbing stuff like that and and the kills she she partakes in are really disturbing it has one of the best climactic endings ever in any movie that pool scene if you've seen it you know what i'm talking about i don't want to spoil it for anyone but it's unbelievable and also the ending is it seems like it's really endearing but actually, I think the ending is super dark, mm-hmm. and it's it's just a. I think it's a really beautiful movie, to, despite the what's going on, because you know we have a twelve year old, and then a twelve year old who's been twelve for two hundred years, you could say, and it's about their romance and trying to fall in love with each other, and they're trying to put each other in the, the other person's shoes, like when she's trying to eat the human food food that he's giving her on their date. She's just trying to be polite, but it makes her sick and stuff like that. And But she also is a protector of him and helps give him confidence in his life against all the bullies who, who are after him. So it's it's a really great film. Yeah, it's got a really beautiful score as well. If y'all haven't seen it, it's really unbelievable. And then the American one, they did a really good job of changing things here and there. Overall, it's the same story, but they definitely changed certain things, especially with um her caretaker, Richard Jenkins' character, the way he gets blood for her is much different in this movie than it is in the in the original. Yeah, check but it out. Unbelievable. Put it on your list ASAP. It's our favorite. Next we have the Blade trilogy. Hell yeah. Wesley Snipes was like one of our heroes growing up as Blade, and these are so fun. The action's awesome. Super gory, terrifying. Especially Guillermo's the second one. Really great gore and. I like what he did with the vampires in the second one where he changed, you know, the form, what their structure of their mouths are like. Like their mouths like open up with four different angles rather than just having teeth and they don't have they don't suck they don't break your skin and and suck the blood that way. They have like I don't know how you describe it, like a tentacle tongue that attaches and sucks blood out that way. It's very similar to what he created in The Strain, which was a book series that he co-wrote, and then they turned it into a TV show. And I love those books. We have them. They're fantastic. Highly recommend it if you guys like science fiction or horror uh, uh, fiction literature. But um, that's exactly what it reminds me of. This is probably where he got the idea for The Strain Vampires. And I liked how they changed up too. I like the first one though, I think the best. I think just the storyline of like the ancient culture of the vampires in this world is super fascinating. How long they've been alive and how long they're trying to stay alive. But the vampire played by Steven Dorff is just effing things up because of his arrogance. Yeah. But Blade is just a fascinating character because he's such a badass, first of all, with his martial arts and his weaponry and his, and his muscle car. Samurai sword, bro. But also yeah. he's half vampire, half mortal. So he can walk in daylight. That's his nickname to, Daywalker. by the vamp- Daywalker. And he is the arch nemesis of the vampires. And it's his goal to kill as many of them as he can because he's half because his mother was a vampire but I think she was turning while she gave birth. Yeah. And then she died. She was bit. Yeah. She was bit like right before she gave birth. Yeah. And so then he got part of the the um, vampire gene inside yeah, of him. Yeah. So he didn't get the full change. She didn't fully change while he was while he was born. But he got all the great perks that come with being a vampire. The super strength, super speed, super intelligence. But he also got the cons where you have to live off human blood to survive. You have to constantly consume it. But him and his buddy... They create some sort of antidote, but it temp- but throughout the franchise, it gets weaker and weaker, and he needs ulterior mo- ulterior methods to maintain his humanity. Yeah, I, I think I like the second one best because the first one is a lot of fun, but the CGI is real bad oh, sometimes. Oh, it's terrible in the, in the final act. Yeah, and then the and music is kind of kind of iffy, and it's very 90s like fashion-y 90s, like super stylish, like a little too stylized. And the, the third one is a lot of fun. It, it doesn't have the scares as the other two. It doesn't have the too much horror, uh, but I think it is a, a, a pretty fun movie with uh, Jessica Biel and Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds basically plays Deadpool in it. Yeah, um, and that was it. Was basically he actually cr- created this character and changed it from the script into what he did in this movie because he was basically auditioning himself as Deadpool to Fox to be able to be like, "Hey, we should make a Deadpool movie. People would like this." And they turned it down for so long until yeah. they eventually got to make it. But I remember being obsessed with Blade, and uh, the third one. I read that Wesley Snipes was a uh, disaster to work with. Mm-hmm. He would um, show up 
late every day he would be smoking weed all the time <laughs> he would like refuse to come out of his trailers at times and then there was one point where he was so pissed with the director that he refused to ever open his eyes while on set so he was, it was like, during the morgue scene yeah so he yeah he, he refused to um play dead properly and so they had to cgi his eyelids closed yeah i mean who knows what happened on that set i believe it was david s goyer who made the third yeah. one who's the he co-writer did. of batman begins with christopher nolan and he's you know he made I think he wrote all three of the blades and just directed the final one. But how about we move on? Actually, first, before we move on, I can't wait for Mahershala Ali as Blade. Like, mm-hmm. that's of all the movie Marvel movies coming out, yeah, they're going to be cool. But Blade is like m- the only one I really care about fully. He's really well cast. He's yeah. perfect. Because in, in uh, Alita Battle Angel, he plays a, a villain who wears all black and he has these cool sunglasses. And it's like, he already looks like Blade in that movie. Yeah. So he's perfect. It's, it's going to be incredible. I can't freaking wait to see what they do. Hopefully, imagine if they do rated R. They, they won't, rated they R. won't, but it would be cool. Yeah, it's it's too, it would be a lot of fun. But I'm very curious to see um, vampires in the MCU though. So it should be fun. Yeah. I'm very, very intrigued by it. They're just spreading that web everywhere. Spidey's yeah, web webbing on. all over the place. All right, let's move on to Underworld, which yeah. came out in 2003. This was directed by Len Wiseman and it's turned into a werewolf, werewolf vampire franchise. So this is a hybrid, which we'll probably put on the were- werewolf list as well. And, um, these five films have grossed over $500 million for the entire franchise, which is not bad, you know? Grossing an average of $100 million on a sci-fi film, which I'm sure the budgets are probably around like between 20 and $40 million each time. So they're not enormous commercial successes, but they're successful enough to keep making them. Yeah, this thing like studios know they can't make a $100 million vampire movie. It's not going to make that much money. Mm-hmm. But these are these are always very well performing. And um, it's funny you say hybrid because Scott Speedman's character is a hybrid in the movie. You're right. But Underworld was so cool the first time we saw it. We watched this. We, watched, we, we watched this a ton when we were kids. We actually did this time. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Kate Beckinsale, uh, like early on, movie star crush for me. Like especially as Selena. Like oh man, Celine. Celine. Sorry. Clearly, you've seen it a bunch it's of times. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> but I like this film a lot. It has the action. Michael Shannon plays. Uh, Michael Sheen plays. I'm sorry. What's his, what's his friggin' name? Michael Shannon. Yeah, you had it right. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, is it right? Michael Sheen. Michael Sheen. Yeah, yeah Michael right, Sheen. Yeah. yeah, he plays a great villain in this as the 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 Lycan adversary, and it's just so a lot of fun. I love the lore of it, the the ancients that like the elders they have who are each take turns being awoken for certain periods of time, and I just really like the world they built in this universe. Yeah, it's really fun, and the action's exceptional. But I love the concept of vampires versus werewolves having a war on this planet that. It's in the shadows, despite humans kind of being on the surface of everything, and they seem to be in control of everything. Really, the vampires and the werewolves are the—well, the vampires are the ones who are in control. Yeah. And it's about the werewolves trying to, you could say, not get their freedom, but also have a right to be on the planet as well, you could say. Yeah, and I really love the werewolf de- design in this universe. It's, they're gigantic. They're scary. They're like these huge beasts, and they're terrifying, and— they're like so brute, brutally strong, and I think it's probably the best um, design of werewolves in movies. Yeah, it's pretty awesome when Michael, he's a werewolf, but then Celine bites him to save his life, and he turns into were vampire wolf <laughs> guy. And it's pretty badass at first, but then like it's kind of a little underwhelming. Like he gets his ass beat a little bit. Yeah, he gets slapped around. But I mean, he's facing an elder vampire who's super powerful. You know? I, yeah, and he didn't really transform too much. I was expecting him to transform a little bit more. He's got black eyes. Yeah, black eyes. Yeah, but it was, it's a great movie. And the, there are a couple of sequels that are just like very cringe and not very great but they had like lichen spinoffs yeah the the rise of the lichens where michael sheen was the lead of it and it told their story from like centuries before this one and then they actually made a new one with kate beckinsale two years ago yeah i can't remember what it's called i never saw it but celine is a badass character she's awesome she tears it up in all the movies the first one she's she's epic she's easily the best part of the movie she is the movie really yeah kate beckinsale is an action star for sure she's awesome she's great move on next up we have the Lost Boys, directed by Joel Shoemaker. This came out in 1987. After moving to a town, two brothers discovered that the area is a haven for vampires. And this was uh, peak Corey Haim in the in the 80s when Man. he was a gigantic star. But this movie is so much fun. It's really great horror, really great gore. I love the Lost Boys crew. Kiefer Sutherland, this was his big breakout, and he is excellent in this movie. Yeah, this movie is just cool it is cool you know yeah. it's like the punk rock vampire coming out party i feel i think it had been done before like this like punk rocker style that was going on in the 80s with vampires 
Um, but I think this just made it into an enormous success pop culture wise. It's still re- relevant today. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago how it's being remade into a TV show, obviously. Mm-hmm. Lost Boys Origins. Origins. <laughs> He's going to star the kid from Stranger Things and one of the other kids as well from another movie show. <laughs> There's always a kid in Stranger Things in every freaking movie. All you, if you're making a show or movie, you, you got to have, one, you gotta have one of them. Actually, it's the kid from It. Okay. The kid from It and the kid from Stranger Things. Yeah. Tag teaming it up. Let's go. <laughs> What's the difference, though? <laughs> they're all the same. They're like they're like five foot four, dark hair, kid from It, kid from Stranger Things, same thing. But Hopefully they'll hopefully it'll be a good show. But The Lost Boys it's iconic. It's, it's yeah. so fun. It's epic. It's scary as hell too. And Patrick Stewart did a good job as the lead. Patrick Stewart? Pa- no, Patrick. What's his name? I was gonna say <laughs> he's in um Speed Two. What's his What's his name? Um, I don't know. Whatever his name is. He, he did well. A good you job probably shouldn't have brought this up if you didn't remember his name. I'll um, Google it. You're gonna Google it? Yeah. <laughs> but but Kiefer is excellent. Like he's like you could clearly see like this guy is made to be an actor. Like his voice is his confidence on screen. He's just eats up the scenery. It's cool that him and his father both have iconic horror films under the belt. Obviously, oh yeah, Donald you're Sutherland. right. Jason Patrick, Jason Patrick, Jason yeah. Patrick, totally different than Patrick Stewart. Um, how Donna Sutherland was in uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which is such a good horror film. You gotta check that out, guys. Oh, guys, if you haven't seen it, yeah, I love that movie. But um, yeah, this Lost Boys is iconic and super cool. I'm honestly not looking forward to a remake, but we'll see. All right, let's move on to I Am a Legend, which came out in 2007, directed by Francis Lawrence, who's the director of The Hunger Games and stuff. Um, it, I think it's a common misconception that people don't understand that these are actually vampires. Why the don't monsters, they understand? Because they can't be exposed to sunlight, remember? Mm. No, so, no, I'm kidding. Oh, yeah, no. No, I'm, I'm just saying in general. But it, it takes place years after a plague kills most of humanity and transforms the rest into monsters, a.k.a. vampires. The sole survivor, played by Will Smith, is alone in New York City and struggles val- valiantly to find a cure. And this is a great, great movie. The The monster's designs are really great. I love like that scene when he goes into that building to get Sam, who ran in there. And he just sees the, the monsters just like huddled together, like sleeping, but they're like... they're metabolism seems to be like on kicking in high gear at all time and they're terrifying and it's a great great film will smith did an unbelievable job leading this on his own basically and this movie was a huge hit and it's one of his best films for sure it's really scary yeah. we saw us in theaters i remember and the scenes where like he's alone inside of his house and he obviously barricades himself in every night with like the the locked up doors and windows and everything, yeah, and then you hear the scream. And he sleeps in his tub every night yeah. it, with the rifle and the dog, and it's so terrifying. Yeah, the noises and everything around him. But I think what's so scary about it is the inevitability that he's going to have to interact at some point with these vampires, and it happens on the highway after he gets actually gets tricked by the vampires into that trap where they hook him up by his foot, and you know they're trying to wait for the sun to go down and get him. And then also later on in the third act of the film where there's they start to attack his home because they they followed, followed them back. Home. They yeah. followed the the woman back to his house. Yeah, well, all of them. She, yeah. she picked him. Oh up. yeah, she saved his life. Yeah, she saved his life. Excellent, excellent film. It's a lot of fun. It's funny, but also it's just really terrifying. It they, is. They, they knocked it out of the park. Next up, we have Only Lovers Left Alive, directed by Jim Jarmus, a depressed musician. A, <laughs> a depressed musician reunites with his lover, though their romance, which has already endured several centuries, it di- is disrupted by the arrival of her uncontrollable younger sister. This movie is really great. It's just a new way of story of a new vampire movie. It's like. Jim Jarmusch was like, I'm going to do something completely different. You know, I'm not going to worry about this. Any action scenes, I'm not going to worry about the typical storylines. Like, I'm just going to show, like, what if we just have, like, a, a vampires who are just, like, artists who like to lounge about and, you know, read books and play music and just try to, you know, go day by day being unnoticed by humans. It's like literally the entire population of Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> this movie. No, but I love this movie. It's a great take. I love the aesthetic, the tone, just the vibe in general of the film. It's got a great cast. I mean, we have Tom Hiddleston, Mia Wazikowska, Wazikowski, Wazikowska, Wazikowska. Yeah, with the V. Oh yeah, you right. With the V in the start. My bad. Okay. And then, um, what's her name? Tilda. Tilda. Tilda Swinton. And it's exceptional acting. Really good writing. I, I enjoy the script a lot. I, I like the film, and you gotta check it out sometime. It's it's a new take. You know, it's yeah. like the rock star kind yeah. of musician take on vampires. It's fun. And I like how um they a few of the characters are like some of the like greatest geniuses ever. Like. John Hurt plays an elder vampire, and he was uh, he's actually William Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I like how they, they tackle the idea that, like, if you're a vampire, 
you're gonna spend a lot of time bored as hell yeah like, it's, yeah it's gonna be a tedious existence just just every day is like an eternity so like what's that like to yeah. be a thousand years old it's like it's another day and you it's like they're trying to find time they're trying to figure out how ways to spend their time because they, they have so much time when you think about it, they've probably done everything you could think of yeah and exactly they, 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 there's no more excitement in their lives and they're just doomed forever to this life yeah like tom hiddleston's character was is a he was a great composer now he it wants to be a, like a he wants to play rock music and stuff but he like gave like vivaldi and like beethoven like many of their most famous symphonies just because he because he didn't want to be noticed so he just gave them the symphonies <laughs> and uh but I, I really love the movie it's a lot of fun the music is really great uh Vasikowski is is really awesome and the late anton yelchin is in it oh yeah and um he's he, in a couple of yeah these. he's awesome in this as like like the typical rocker guy that like everyone knows this kind of guy and um it's great to see him in, in one of his latter movies and this is jim jarmus did a great job with this one next up we have interview with the vampire directed by neil jordan a vampire tells his epic life story love betrayal loneliness and hunger this film stars iconically brad pitt and tom cruise as well as kirsten dunst's first movie role and she was excellent and christian slater who plays the journalist who is interviewing brad pitt's character plus antonio banderas oh yeah Don't antonio zorro bro yeah, of course and this movie's awesome like there's so much hair in this movie <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of hair <laughs> like if there's it's like in, in terms of sparkliness and twilight it's yeah. the hair in this movie yeah and tom cruise is awesome he's great he as, goes all in as a vampire yeah he like committed and this is before brad was really brad like tom was the star of this production at the time and i even read interviews where brad was kind of a little jealous of because uh, it, it was like Tom's set, not his set yet. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't there yet. But this movie's great. Kirsten Dunst is really unbelievable in her role. For such a young performer, she just was incredible, like so impressive. And I love the story. I love the aesthetic. I love, you know, period pieces. And it's got a lot of the themes that you love to see in classical storytelling in this big film. It's really great. Yeah, it's it's similar to only lovers left alive where it's talking about like dealing with the cons of being a vampire a lot in eternity eternal unquenched thirst which is a big theme of this film the extreme solitude the betrayals the horrible acts that you have to commit as a vampire against human beings and it's really interesting i think the the dialogue is sensational and it's it's a lot of fun it's i think it's you know we love these period pieces and stuff like that so i love the wardrobe i love the set design and i also love you know kind of questioning the decisions you made in terms of becoming a vampire with brad pitt's character and coming to terms with that but also having to face your your maker in terms of tom cruise's vampire character i can't remember the name it's lestat de Lioncourt, and if it was a mistake to do this kind of thing but also you know meeting your maker is just an interesting concept 100 percent. let's move on to nosferatu which came out in 1922 directed by fw murnau vampire count orlock expresses interest in a new residence and a real estate agent hutter's wife and this is you know peak german expressionism in silent film era iconic film you know this is silent film era i think this is probably one of the most important films made back then besides you know like films like the kid but i think this is top five all time silent film and this was terrifying for audiences yeah. i you, it maybe it looks a little cheesy in at this time period, looking at it through a lens of modern era, but um, Nosferatu was really, really terrific for horror. And, you know, the makeup, the costume design, the, the long fingers and the yeah. nails, like when he's reaching at her in the bed. It's amazing. It's a really fantastic film. Cinematography is really incredible. Yeah, well, German Expressionism in the silent film era, they were top of the game, you could say, in cinematography and experimenting with the camera work, like the Dutch angle, how that was invented with the Academy of Dr. Caligari and stuff like that. So I think like those two films specifically are probably my favorite, you could say, horror silent films because it was just a, a, a new genre, really. Mm -hmm. And they're the most iconic from that era, for sure. Yeah, and this movie is really sensational. It, you should definitely check it out if you love horror you know, every horror movie draw has drawn from movies like this one for sure. How about we um intermission no, it? Intermission it? Let's do it, man. Well, first, you know, if you're gonna <laughs> check us out on YouTube, you may have noticed that Anthony and I have some brand new laptops on our desk. These are courtesy of LG. These are the 17-inch LG Gram Ultra Lightweight laptops. The cool thing is they're 16 by 10 aspect ratio versus the usual 16 by 9, so more vertical space, better for editing, better for referring to our notes while we do our shows. And not to mention they are shockingly light and the displays are sensational. 
Anthony loves watching movies on this. I do too. They're they're great to view. Looks amazing. On these screens, we'll put links in our YouTube bio of this video for the LG Gram 16 inch and 17 inch models. Thank you, LG, for the laptops and for sponsoring the show for the rest of the year. Now, for all you writers out there, we have a new sponsor, Arc Studio Pro. They have teamed up with us to offer a very special deal on their screenwriting software. Follow the link in this YouTube video. Head on over to Arc Studio Pro and get thirty dollars off your subscription. Arc Studio Pro is the most efficient, streamlined, and elegant screenwriting software on the market. They have all sorts of perks like apps for your desktop or phone, online collaborations with co-writers, so it's like you're using Google Documents with a friend, super helpful outlining tools, revisionist management, and links to feedback. Now, the premium version costs $99 per year, but take $30 off with our link, and that cuts the price down. It's a huge deal. I couldn't recommend it enough. If you're interested in screenwriting or you already do like screenwriting, you know how important the format of your screenplay is. Arc Studio Pro is the best way to do that. Again, follow the link in our YouTube video and start writing today. Now, let's move into our intermission and we'll begin with our movie quote competition. Let's go. All right. This one's for me. I know you don't smoke weed. I know this. But I'm going to get you high today because it's Friday. You ain't got no job and you ain't got shit to do. <laughs> I get fired today day off. <laughs> Craig. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> Yes, sir. That's Smokey in Friday. That's funny. <laughs> that's one of my favorite comedies. Okay, here's mine. Now, listen carefully. This is a very important rule. This is the only rule. You get injured on the field, you better make sure you die. Say that one more time. Now, listen very carefully. This is a very important rule. This is the only rule. You get injured on the field, you better make sure you die. What is this? It sounds so familiar. Man. It's going to kill you. If you get injured on the field, you better hope you die. Make sure you die. Better make sure you die. Oh, man. This is going to kill me, man. It's a war film, obviously. Because if you don't die on the field, you're going to get tortured. It's not just a normal war film, though. Oh! Edge of Tomorrow. Yep. Yes. Good one. It was coming to me. Nice job. Rita. Yeah. Thanks, man. All right. <laughs> You're welcome. Guess this movie. Was, I love that movie. <laughs> well, you said nice job. Yeah, you did a good job. Yeah. Guess this movie release year. <laughs> Warm Bodies. With Nicholas Holt. No, with Hickless Nolt. <laughs> <laughs> Two for three. I'm doing 2000 and 14. Nope. Damn it, 2013. Oh, I was so close. Pretty close, but <laughs> not correct. That was a very harsh no. <laughs> like, you said it immediately. I didn't even finish saying 14. And you said, nope. <laughs> I didn't say it like that. I just Damn. Went, damn. <laughs> I didn't say it like that. I said, damn. <laughs> All right, here's my movie release here. Jurassic Park. Um, I feel like I always get this one wrong. Dun, 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 no, I know, yeah. It's 19... Dun, 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 dun. I always say 1994, and I feel like I'm always wrong when I say that. That's got to be 1994. Or is it... Yeah, it's 1994. 93. Ah! Oh, God damn it! <laughs> I knew I was... I'm always wrong every time I guess that. I don't know why. I can't get that one right. I don't know. Get it through your... Can you get that through your head? I can't. I clearly cannot. All right, movie pop quiz time. What is Michael Myers' hometown? Shoot, Michael Myers' hometown. I'll settle for a state. Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I love how oh. you opened that with like, "Oh, I know this." <laughs> no, I did. Just kidding. No way. <laughs> um, hold on. Okay, I do state. Yeah, I guess the state. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Hold Midwest. On. Is it? Um, is it Missouri? No. <laughs> <laughs> Michigan. No. I don't know. Illinois. So Michael escapes Smith's Grove Sanitarium and returns to his hometown of Haddonfield, Illinois. Haddonfield. I was never going to get that. Hey, now you know, man. Haddonfield. 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 <laughs> All right, here's my trivia question. How many Jack Ryan movies did Harrison Ford star in? I think only only two, right? Yeah, two. Correct. Yeah. Good one. Thanks, man. Nice job. Killed it today. I I, two yeah. out of three. Two out of three. Not bad. Not bad. I've been missing. You it. are batting 75, <laughs> 750 and everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, like two out of three is 666. Yeah. yeah. Someone's going to see that you Some, don't know how to do math because yeah. you don't. 
Time for the haters. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get to the haters. Let's do it. Okay. We have... Brady McCulloch said... We mispronounced. We said "Magnificent Six instead yeah. of "Sinister Six for the Venom. Unsubscribed. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I said, yeah, when you corrected me, I'm like, oh, I'm such an idiot. And then uh, Preston Gear said, "All right, not sure if it was already addressed, but the Crash movie that James was talking about, uh, I was talking about it, was not by Soderbergh. It was by Cronenberg. I mixed it up with Sex Lies and Videotape with James Spader as well. That's why I mixed it up. Do you even host a movie podcast?" <laughs> And it's messed up. Well, one wrong fact spoken aloud on an unscripted film podcast. Unsubscribed. <laughs> <laughs> I love when people can accept that we make mistakes. Yeah, it's nice. Especially when you make mistakes. We all have to accept that. It's pretty often. <laughs> <laughs> and RT Ria said, you mixed up traffic with crash. <laughs> Unsubscribed. <laughs> <laughs> Those are our haters this week. All right, we didn't have any re- like me- angry yeah, haters. Yeah, it was a good week. No, no, no angry heat. No one telling us to kill ourselves or anything. Yeah, no, All right, nice. biggest supporter of the week. We have Nino Rod left a great five star review. Hmm? Question mark with the smirking emoji. Hmm. <laughs> How do you guys only have four point nine stars out of five? Baffles me. Well, keep up the great work, guys, and congratulations on the half marathon. You guys should do a full marathon dressed as your favorite movie characters. <laughs> Thanks, Nino Rod. Honestly. You know, when you have any kind of content online, you're going to have haters. We have a couple of people who just really dislike us. A few times a few times it's been just because of the way we look and who there's, how we were born. Yeah. So, you know, there's nothing been, you can do about that. Yeah, there's just been some people who seem to be very angry in their own lives and they're just looking to take it out on someone. So, we're just like a easy target cuz we're just in the public. But know? we're very grateful for all the all the people who have left us five-star reviews to make that a 4.9 because we have over 1300 reviews now and wow. it's pretty incredible to be at 4.9. That's I a think. lot of five stars. We have a lot of great people out there leaving us reviews. So. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone who doesn't leave those random one-star reviews and writes essays at the same time. Anyways, let's move on to on this day in film oh, history. I have, I have another one. Oh, you have a, a a top fan? Top fan. Wow. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Let's do it. Better be good. Llama man. He wrote on our Breaking Bad episode Today marks the day I have officially watched every episode of Raiders of the Lost podcast. Wow. This show has been so much fun listening to these guys talk about films makes my day so much more easier to get through. I don't have Apple to give them a five-star review, but if I did, I would figure out a way to break the system and give them six stars. Keep them coming, guys. Thanks, pal. Appreciate it so much. You can actually, with just an email, make an Apple account. Anyone oh, cool. Can, anyone can. Thanks, Llama Man. You're the best Llama Man. Appreciate it. Yeah. See, we, we have a lot of great comments we get every it day that we don't so always nice. share. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting emotional. All right. Let's move on to this day in film history. Today is October 7th. In 2003, the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, became the governor of California. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Marco Beltrami's birthday, who is a fantastic composer. He actually just did Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Great, great composer. He also came up with, you know, Star Trek, the new theme and everything like that. So... He did the new Star Trek? I thought he did. Who's, who did Oh, the... that's Giacchino. Oh, scratch that. <laughs> I mean. Unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. Mistake. <laughs> <laughs> he did Logan. Logan. He did Logan. Yeah. He does all of. Um, his... Oh, he did 310 to Yuma. He did all of Mangold's movies. So he does all of Mangold's movies. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely didn't do Star Trek. I don't know why I was just speaking on my ass like that for. What's your streaming recommendation, Poltergeist? I have that too. <laughs> we just watched it and it's just a really great movie. What um service was it on? HBO Max. Cool. If you're on HBO Max, they have a ton of great horror films. Yeah, they have a a great lineup of horror stuff. Like, if you want to watch horror this month, subscribe to HBO Max and you'll be set for the entire month. That sounds like an ad. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) HBO Max. Not even money. We're just recommended because they have a lot of good stuff on there. Yeah, we're just we're just good stand up guys. Yeah. All right, let's get back into the episode and we'll move into what we do in the shadows, which came out in 2014, directed by Taika Waititi and Jemaine Clement, and this movie is hysterical so Viago Deacon and Vladislav are vampires who are finding that modern life has them struggling with the mundane like paying rent keeping up with the chore wheel (laughs) trying to get into nightclubs and overcoming flatmate conflicts and this is just like a a fun fictional like mockumentary about vampires if they're alive today and just Mm. like because we loved Flight of the Concords which Jermaine Jermaine was in with Brett and that show is so funny and so good and well written I think this is also just incredibly well written and well directed and beyond funny yeah and it's filmed as a documentary which makes it even better and it's a TV show now on FX it's very popular and it's obvious to see why and Jermaine's so funny in this but I think what Taika and he did was like you've never seen a vampire movie like this. Like they're just like bringing that um, New Zealand 
quirky, charm. charming humor into that genre. The and it first works. twenty minutes of this movie, I can't loud. stop laughing. Yeah. It's hysterical. It's and they're like going through the house and like yeah. waking everybody Giving up. The and tour. It's yeah. so so funny. It's, and I love I love when they encounter the group of werewolves. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and they hate each other. It's so Dude, funny. Like, you can just imagine how much fun they had writing the script, just like cr- cackling probably. Like they must every have been line. cracking up the, the entire time of filming. Man, and the costumes. It's like it's set in modern day, but they're still dressing like Victorian. Era. It's Plus, great. with the New Zealand accents with vampires, yeah. it's so funny. I mean, we love New Zealand people in their accents and Australian accents, but it's just funny with the with vampires. With vampires, yeah. it works so well. It's great. I love it, and it's so popular. People always. It's a big request for us to do what we do in the shadows. Yeah, but we're gonna do a Taika episode soon. We should. He's great. He got a bunch of great movies so yeah. far. Under his people belt. are big big fan of his. I mean, Thor Ragnarok is one of the best Marvel movies easily. Like top oh, three. Yeah. Oh yeah, top totally. three out of thirty seven movies. <laughs> <laughs> this year <laughs> this month <laughs> next up we have Daybreakers which came out in 2009 directed by the Spearg brothers and this stars Ethan Hawke this is actually a sci-fi vampire movie in the year 2019 so in the far distant future <laughs> when this was made <laughs> a plague has transformed almost every human into vampires faced with a dwindling blood supply the fractured dominant race plots their survival meanwhile a researcher works with a covert band of vamps on a way to save humankind. This movie's really good. Ethan Hawke is awesome. Nobody saw this, but it's criminally underrated. The blend of the sci-fi uh, and in the science with the vampires is really brilliant. It hadn't been done that way before. And I really, really think this is a great vampire movie. The concept is awesome. You know, what happens when vampires take over the world and then their one only food supply that they can live off starts to die out. You know, what are you going to do? How are you going to get blood? So dealing with that is so fascinating and how they're just experimenting with different things, like trying to uh, make them not need blood anymore and stuff like that. And just Sam Neill's awesome in this film. He's like a, a corporate... Vampire. Daddy vampire, yeah. you could say. And, uh, Ethan Hawke's awesome and everything he does, but this is a really cool movie. We it, we saw this like a bunch of times. Bunch of times <laughs> <laughs> Still funny. <laughs> and what I like about Ethan Hawke is he often takes chances on first time directors, which is something that stars don't often do. And um, the Spearg brothers, I I believe they did the time travel movie that he's in as well. Premonition. And premonition. And I, I think that he did a great job. And they, they really knocked this one out of the park. It's a lot of fun. Check it out. It is yeah. fun. It's different. That's what I like about yeah. when there's a genre that's like full yeah. of different movies. Like what do other ones do different to make it unique? Like seeing them with zombies. Yeah. What are you going to do different? Exactly. And then we have A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, which came out in 2014, directed by Anna Lily Amirpour. And this is an Iraqi film. I mean, an Iranian film. Iranian. This is And this is an Iranian film. And... The ghost town Bad City, a place that reeks of death and loneliness, the townspeople are unaware they are being stalked by a lonesome vampire. And this is um also like a revenge vampire movie because she she tends to kill men who abuse women in some way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I love the filmmaking style, the black and white, and a lot of handheld cinematography. It's very surreal. I think some of the st- some of the filmmaking as well, and you know it's. A great take on vampires. I don't think I'd ever. See. It's reminded me a lot of Let Me In and Let the Right One In when the first time I saw it. Mm. But um, yeah, I enjoyed this movie a lot. Yeah, it's it's great cinematography. It looks beautiful. I just her second film wasn't quite the same caliber. Um, The Bad Batch. Mm-hmm. Um, but hopefully, if she makes another one, she can um improve and do something like this one again. Sure, she will. Yeah, this is a great, great movie. Mm-hmm. And again, a new take on vampires, which we love. Yeah, it's refreshing. Next up, we have From Dusk Till Dawn, which came out in 1996, directed by Robert Rodriguez, not Quentin Tarantino, which is a huge misconception that people say all the time, I really? hear. Yeah, people think that Tarantino directed. He, he just He's an actor in this, and I think he also worked on the script and was a producer as well. He George, wrote it. George Clooney is in this, and it's two criminals who are brothers and their hostages unknowingly seek temporary refuge in a truck stop populated by vampires with chaotic re- results. And this is a wild freaking movie. Not only are the characters, like especially Quentin Tarantino's character, just complete vicious criminals, but you know they're trying to escape the fuzz. They're trying to get across the border, and then they think they find refuge in this giant bar. But man, they picked the wrong place. And Tarantino's actually good in this. Yeah, he's good. He act- does a great job yeah. with the acting. He plays like a straight up psychopath in this movie, like a sociopath who loves feet. Yeah, serial killer. And 
And George Clooney, he plays a good tough guy in this movie. You can't often say that he plays a great, like, badass, but, you know, he's believable in this movie as this as this hard ass. I think it's mostly the neck tattoo. Is the, you're right. The neck tattoo definitely helps. If he didn't have that, it'd be like, eh, George Clooney's like, <laughs> such a nice guy, he seems like, though. <laughs> and this, this is a great movie because once it turns and the vampires start showing up in the club, you're like, Oh my god! And it becomes com- something completely else, and it just like blows you away. It's insane. Yeah, it's wild. And then that famous Salma Hayek dance where she she turns into the vampire mid dance is like, holy crap! This is crazy. Yeah, the vampires are terrifying yeah. in this movie. The the prosthetics and the the wardrobe and the design of them is just oh, very god. scary, it's scary yeah. as hell. And there's a lot of great like practical effects, like ve- special effects, and you know the gore is excellent, and it's just a rocking time it's so much fun yeah speaking of yeah. childhood crushes with Kate Beck and how about Salma Hayek I mean oh man come Salma on Hayek. Salma Hayek <sighs> she's still got it she's still got it she's yeah. she's awesome yeah she's oh she's in a couple movies coming out this year too yeah she's got and she's in the Eternals yeah all right then we have Dracula the one that is also known as Bram Stoker's Dracula directed by Francis Ford Coppola in 1992 star Gary Oldman the centuries old vampire Count Dracula comes to England to seduce his barrister Jonathan Harker's fiance Mina Murray and inflict havoc in the foreign land. This is a pretty wild movie. The design, set design, costume design, wardrobe, and the design of the vampires are terrifying. Gary Oldman is out of his mind good in this movie. And his his accent that he does in this movie and just like the way he speaks, it's incredible acting, man. It's you got to check it out just for his performance. It's one of the most visually stunning films ever, man. It's really beautiful. Cinematography is just insane. And Coppola, he crafted a great adaptation. I, I will say I, I'm not a huge fan of the romance of it all because in the novel, he doesn't, It's not. there's no romance in the original novel. But in this film, he pursues Winona Ryder's character because she looks just like his bride from centuries previous who passed away. And um, also, I love Keanu. Yeah, but I love him to death. But he's not a great actor at this point in his career. And especially when you, you're sharing scenes with one of the best actors of all time, it shows. Yeah. And Coppola even knows that. He knew that. And he said he said in an interview he only cast Keanu because he needed a hot heartthrob in the role of the of his character. So that's why he cast Keanu. So when Keanu is acting opposite Gary Oldman, they're like it it is noticeable and it kinda of distracts you. But otherwise, the movie is sensational. It's really amazing. Yeah, ninety two. How many years is that after Bill and Ted? Like a it's couple. right after. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, he was a huge star in the nineties. Where he was massive. But like when you see like the dinner scene with him and, and Gary Oldman, and then like when he's coming into the into the castle and everything, it's yeah. it's pretty noticeable. Yeah, he's not good at acting scared. <laughs> but this movie, you could probably say out of Coppola's entire career, is his most creative, his most oh, yeah. surreal, very colorful, and it's pretty trippy. Yeah, and I love his use of shadows because when Dra- Dracula's in a room. His shadow is animated on the walls, but he's like not even moving. It's really awesome, the, the, the filmmaking behind this movie, because this is before CGI. Yeah, check it out, everybody. Next up, we have Thirst, which came out in 2009, directed by the great Park Chan-wook. Sang Hyun, a priest working for a hospital, selflessly volunteers for a secret vaccine development project intended to eradicate a deadly virus. However, the virus eventually takes over the priest. He nearly dies, but makes a miraculous recovery by an accidental transfusion of vampire blood. He realizes his sole reason for living, the pleasures of the flesh. And this is one of my favorite vampire movies. Park Chan-wook put his usual flourishes of, you know, sex, intrigue, violence, blood, lust, like all into this movie. It's super fun. It's dark. It's got some great dark comedy to it. And it's like it's awesome. It's like a priest becomes a vampire. Like it's mm-hmm. an awesome, it's very ironic. Yeah, and he's reluctant to be a vampire, but then eventually, be- when he turns the woman he loves into a vampire, she becomes like this ruthless psychopathic vampire who just loves feasting on as many people as possible. So he kind of like follows her in that pursuit, and it's a really, really great vampire. Yeah, movie. and it stars Kang Hong Song, who is the lead in in Parasite, yeah. who we all remember, and he's in a bunch of Bong Joon Ho's films and. He's obviously a phenomenal actor, but yeah, this movie is wild. It's not for the faint of heart. If you can't handle some pretty intense gore, don't really recommend it. It's going to churn your stomach a little bit, some scenes specifically. But I think one of my favorite scenes in the entire film is when he first gets his taste of blood on his hands. And he's like licking it like a dog. It's it's pretty crazy. Yeah, because the first act, he's like trying to figure out what's happening to him. 
And that's his first instance of like he smells the blood and licks it, and he's like compelled to lick it. Yeah. And again, this is the guy who made Old Boy, so buckle up. It's pretty wild. It's very weird. There are some really weird parts to this movie, but in a good way. It's very trippy. You've never seen anything like it, especially for a vampire movie. It's super original. And the ending is so awesome. It's it's great. I love it. Moving ne- on to Next up we have Twilight, the, the franchise. franchise. Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> now this franchise has grossed it grossed three point three billion dollars. Five films. So Massive. they came out every year from two thousand eight to two thousand twelve. Five. Wow, films. you're right. Every year. Well, it was like Harry Potter. They had again. They had to do them quick before the actors aged. Yeah, I guess you're right. And they wanted that cheddar cheese. Oh yeah. Well, even though vampires don't age, but you know Robert Pattinson does. <laughs> <laughs> this fr- this franchise actually built Summit Entertainment, the production company. This was one of their first productions, and they just exploded after this. Oh, I didn't know that. But um, yeah, the Twilight movies. You know, they are what they are. They're movies. Yeah, they're movies. <laughs> it's not the most compelling stuff, but, you know, it's, it gave us two big stars, and it's got a good cast, and the first one, is, I think, is the best one for sure. Yeah. But it's a, They're all, you know, they're the Twilight it, movies. It, you, you take you what, know what, what you're getting. Yeah, you know what you're getting, and I know people who love love the books. I even know, you know, not just girls who love the books. I know guys who love the books, so I'm, I'm assuming the books are better than the films. Not that the films, you know, are terrible. Yeah, what are you trying to say? But, you know, they sparkle and stuff. But it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's they're, I've seen the first one. I didn't hate it. It's just, you know, it's not my cup of tea completely. I will just say it's it's hard to do vampires PG-13. Mm-hmm. You know, it's pretty difficult. So for me, I'm sorry if you love them franchise, but it's just, I just don't feel it for me for vampires. Like, you got it for me. I want to see the gore. I want to see the blood. I want to see the violence, so that was always missing for me. It's all about the romance. That's yeah. what this this franchise is about. Yeah, but hey, we got to talk about it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's we'll have to do an episode. on It's them. a pop culture phenomenon. Yeah, it was like it 3. was three three billion dollars. Yeah, five movies. It's still relevant. There's That's like insane. it's still all over TikTok, all the memes and stuff. You know what I mean? So it was it was a really big deal for a lot of people. So you got to respect that for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I respect it. Let's move on to the hunger. Released in 1993, directed by Tony Scott, rest in peace. The Egyptian vampire lady, Miriam, subsists on the blood of her lovers. In return, the guys or girls don't age until Miriam has had enough of them. Unfortunately, that's currently the case with John, so his life expectancy is less than 24 hours. Desperately, he seeks help from the famous Dr. Sarah Sarah Roberts. She doesn't really believe his story, but becomes curious and contacts Miriam and gets caught in her spell, too. And the stars David Bowie, Susan Sarandon, and also... Willem Dafoe, Dafoe, the goblin himself. <laughs> <laughs> and Tony Scott's a great director. And this movie, like all of his other movies, has so much energy. His directing style is excellent, keeps you invested. David Bowie is awesome. I mean, this cast is insane. It's a great, it, it's not great, but it's a really good time. Um, it's got some good gore in it. And I mean, it's a Tony Scott movie. Um, it's going to be fast paced and have a great soundtrack and be well directed. And this cast is awesome. And obviously, he. He, Susan Sarandon worked with her, his brother as well in Thelma and, Dewey, and Luis. Yeah, I'll watch the three of them in any movie they make. You know, they're awesome. That's a good looking cast right there. Very, very attractive cast. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to Kronos. This was Guillermo del Toro's first film, I believe, yep. released in 1993, starring Ron Perlman. It's a really cool film that it's a different take on vampires where. There's this mysterious de- device that kind of resurfaces after four centuries of being lost. And with it comes the transformation, you could say, of being a vampire and living forever. And, you know, it's just people are basically killing each other over it. And this has great gore in it. He is like Peter Jackson, where their first films, they use a lot of practical gore. And um, it's very graphic. And uh, it's, I, this is Ron Perlman, I think this could be his first movie as well, and obviously they collaborated together a lot. But, I mean, even with such a small budget, Guillermo showed his knack for visual storytelling. The cinematography is really excellent. Um, you, you can see his style, the early signs of it, his, his like he, him liking to contrast blue, yellow, and, and green together. And it's just a, a really good, small, independent um, vampire film. Now, before we continue, if I was doomed to live forever, <laughs> I would sure hope to... God, that I had my lawnmower 4.0 from Manscaped because things are going to get out of control with all of this silent uh, emptiness and <laughs> solitude in my existence. Because Eternal solitude. You know, Manscaped's lawnmower 4.0 trimmer is now available using our coupon code Raiders of the Lost for 20% off and free shipping. This groomer is waterproof, has a 7,000 RPM motor, wireless charger, 
built-in light. It's amazing. It can ward off vampires as well. Fellas, you got to get on Manscaped. Their products are incredible. The boxer briefs are very comfortable. We love their their men's wipes that they have, the deodorizers. They got these feet wipes that are great too, make your feet smell, smell you great. You need that for your running. Hey, my feet, no, my feet actually don't smell after I run. Oh, really? I change my socks pretty frequently. Okay. Like, I go through, like, three pairs a day, depending on if, if I'm training or not. Yeah, but you still should use this, the feet wipes. I still do. Yeah, yeah, I still do. But anyways, I recommend getting your hands on the Performance Package 4.0. It's got a, just a bundle of great products from Manscaped. So, everyone listening, if you got a man in your life, ladies, guys, if you, there's a special someone in your life, some some dude. Or a vampire. Or a vampire. And you don't know what to get them for a gift, Get go to Manscaped. Use our coupon code Raiders of the Lost at checkout. You'll get twenty percent off and free shipping worldwide on some incredible products. So do that ASAP. The holidays are coming up. You have to get some gifts soon. This is stuff we'll use too. Now, do you love movie posters? If you're a fan of movies or TV, there's no better way to express that love than by decking your place out with a ton of movie posters. The best place to do that, of course, is movieposters.com. The number one place to get your posters online. Use our special promo code Raiders15 off to get 15% off your order today. They have a gigantic selection of movies, pretty much every film imaginable, all sorts of sizes, framing, backlights, whatever your poster needs are, movieposters.com can handle it. If you're checking out our set on YouTube, you'll see that it is decked out with these amazing posters, high quality stuff, everyone. You gotta go over to movieposters.com. Use our coupon code Raiders15 off and get 15% off your order today. All right, let's get back in to our vampire list and continue with Near Dark, which came out in 1987, directed by Catherine Bigelow. A Midwestern farm boy reluctantly becomes a member of the undead when a girl he meets turns out to be part of a band of southern vampires who roam the highways in stolen cars. Part of his initiation includes a bloody assault on a hick bar. And this movie's it's a pretty wild ride. It's very, very action heavy. Very yeah, uh, very energetic. A lot going on. There's also an Australian accent in there too, I believe. Not just Southern. Australian. Australian. There's an Australian vampire in him, mate. And it's it's cool. The thing with Catherine Bigelow's films, I think that they're just cool. You know, I think this is very edgy. You know, it's it's um kind of a point break feel, you could say a little bit. But I just I like her style a lot, and she had like probably in terms of action of the 80s and 90s she's one of the best out there for sure oh yeah she's one of the best ever of all, she like of had that style down to a t like a, a lot of people were trying to like do the same things that she was doing yeah couldn't agree more about it next up we have 30 days of night which came out in 2007 directed by david slade this is based on a graphic novel the story of an isolated alaskan town is plunged into darkness for a month each year when the sun sinks below the horizon and this is about a group of vampires that on and enter this town to feast for the month. This movie is crazy and scared the hell out of me the first time I saw it. Yeah, we watched this a lot when we were young. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Josh Hardett, right? Josh He's Hartnett, the lead. Yeah. Man, it's such a great idea for vampires because, you know, Alaska where the sun doesn't rise for like a long periods of time. 30 days. <laughs> I know it's 30 days. Know, I'm, I'm just saying another way of saying 30 days. Yeah. P.O.S. <laughs> Anyways. But um, the, I think it's a great idea. It's a great idea. However, the movie itself doesn't really deliver it's got great gore the first act is great yeah uh danny houston's awesome as the main vampire um the action can be good but the characters trash they're so bad the dialogue is terrible and also it kind of starts on a downer like josh hartnett and melissa george they're like they're they're they've recently separated and it's just the first 30 so the first 30 minutes is just them complaining about their divorce to all the other characters because oh, everyone knows each other yeah. yeah and it's like small town yeah it's like is this a fun vampire movie or is it just like people talking about how depressed they are? And then it gets going. And when it gets going, it's pretty good. But ultimately, I think the script needed a rewrite and the characters just... I, let's just get to the vampires as soon as possible is all I want. The concept is awesome. Great concept. The v action is great. The the gore is good. Super bloody. Lots of cliches, though. Yeah, like action movie cliches. cliches yeah. Stuff like that. But ultimately, it did... They did pull off the job pretty well by the end of the film. But the... I just look at this movie as like a bit of a disappointment because of how much potential it had. All right, let's move on. Next up, we have Vampire's Kiss, which came out in 1988, directed by Robert Bierman. After an encounter with a neckbiter, a, publish exec a publishing executive thinks that he's turning into a vampire and this stars Nick Cage in one of his early great roles. 
and he is just out of his mind in this movie. He just plays a guy who thinks that he is turning into a vampire and is trying to convince himself that it's actually true. It was the birth of the Nick Cage meme where he's like in a suit Crazy looking face. sideways and his eyes are super wide and he looks out of his mind. That was where this movie came from. That that meme came from here. And he's trying to like act like a vampire and eat like an, a vampire. And, like when he eats the yeah, cockroach? Yeah, uh, nothing. He really did eat that cockroach. No, I, I believe it. Nothing's really working. It's just a really silly, dark comedy. He's just so full of energy. He's an awesome lead, and you can see the early signs of like how he, this like is a precursor to what he's doing now, like the weird movies he's doing now. Yeah, the music and stuff. It's the late '80s, early '90s era of like the cheesy cheese ball '80s music and lots of shoulder pad yeah. suits. And it's just the style. It's like you know, it wasn't. They were taking swings back then, man. Yeah. They were swinging at everything. Yeah, it's not the best movie in the world, but it's it's pretty funny. I mean, Sylvester Stallone was in a movie where he wore a diaper as a police officer around this time, so they were you know swinging and missing sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Moving on to Afflicted. This came out in 2013, directed by Derek Lee and Cliff Prowse. Two best friends see their trip of a lifetime take a dark turn when one of them is struck by a mysterious affliction. Now, in a foreign land, they race to uncover the source before it consumes him completely. This movie is freaking nuts. Uh, we watched this together when it came out, and I thought it was awesome. Yeah, it's a good, it's a found footage vampire movie. Yeah. And they did a really good job. It's not like crazy found footage where you can't tell what's going on and it's really interesting they turn the vampire thing into you think it's a virus for most of the movie and, and then when he, he fully turns you're like oh my god yeah because he he's just sick because you he's he's also sick but also he's getting powers like he gets he can jump up several stories up a building and he's getting very strong so it's very curious what exactly is happening to him and they're in the evening so he's he's not experiencing sunlight so they don't know it's something like that so i like the way that it unravels, and then even the audience isn't sure what's happening to them. Yeah. We're fans of found footage movies, and yeah. throwing another element with vampires, and it's, it's a good time. Check yeah. it out ASAP. Yeah. Next up, we have Van Helsing. I love this movie. Which came out in 2004, directed by Steven Summers. The famed monster hunter is sent to Transylvania to stop Count Dracula, who is using Dr. Frankenstein's research and a werewolf for nefarious purposes. This is basically like... The Avengers of the Monster Universe. <laughs> but the DC version where they just went to these team up first. Do you know what uh, the budget of this movie was? I would guess $120 million. $160 million. $160 million? Yeah, it made about $300 million, so it probably didn't make a profit. Didn't, didn't profit. Which is why we didn't get a sequel. Wow, Man. that's... That's crazy. That's a lot of money for because back then. You would think, like, why why not make a sequel to this movie? Because it's pretty cool. I liked it. Oh yeah, I had a good time. There's some good elements. Like I like the the brides um, when they like, can fly around and stuff. And Kate Beckinsale is awesome. Again, Drac Dracula yeah. is pretty cool. Dracula and, and Hugh Jackman's just a great movie star lead, and he's awesome as as Van Helsing. And th the movie got that much money because Stephen Summers made the mummies, so he was like established. Like he probably could. Be like, hey, we can find success with this. So the studio yeah. probably felt confident with him. They probably should have just toned it down and do like just one monster. Dracula and not worry about werewolves and Dr. Frankenstein and Frankenstein and all this stuff. Just stick to one thing. That is the problem. If they just stuck with just vampires, that would have been a much better movie. Maybe in the third movie in the trilogy or something, they could have everyone in it. But it was and just. And you don't a need a $160 million budget. Yeah, you do not. You can do a great vampire movie without that. Because it is a big CGI fest, the second half of the yeah. movie. So it definitely had a lot of potential, but I think they just. They swung too hard and they, they kind of missed. They hit a foul ball. No, they, they hit like a grounder to first base. Single? Yeah, single. They hit a single. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's like. I'm sure they've made their money back over time with like DVD, DVD Blu-ray yeah, and Blu -rays probably, posters yeah. and stuff like that, but like not a huge profit. They so. sold so many posters. Yeah, probably. Jimmy bought three. Three, and uh, they're all just taped on top of each other. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Fright Night. This came out in 2011. This is a remake. And when a nice new neighbor moves in next door, Charlie, played by Anton Yelchin, discovers that he is an ancient vampire who preys on the community. Can he save his neighborhood from the creature with the help of his famous vampire killer, Peter Vincent, and this movie, it's good. Could have been great. Uh, Colin Farrell plays the villain, the vampire next door. He's awesome as a vampire. He's, yeah, he's great choice, but his vampire is just boring. He kind of doesn't leave his house. He just drinks beer all the time. He's just chilling. It take, takes place in Las Vegas, and you never see him really except for like maybe a couple scenes in the third act later on leaving his house. He's just always home. It kind of gets a little tedious. It's like, can't yeah. you make him do something more interesting? And also, it doesn't really make sense for a vampire to settle down in a house and also to 
interfering in the neighborhood. Yeah, that's the thing that makes that just makes no sense to me. Like either. clearly, authorities would be alerted, and they would eventually find that the source of all these murders. So, like, I understand if he's a vampire and he travels to do his kills, but. If you're killing like your neighbors, like it's not very smart. Yeah, and people are missing all over the town, and yeah. all the kids. Like every day, there are new kids missing from the high school. It's like th- that makes no sense. If yeah. I'm a, if I'm a a vampire trying to not attract attention, I'm not gonna do it on the same street. Exactly. At least would, go and, out of town, I would, and I would kill someone in, in in a different city every night. It's crazy. Yes, but it is. It does have some good moments. It can be pretty funny. The original is a lot of fun too. Also suffers from the same story problem. It's a nice concept, but I just ultimately don't think it really can work for a vampire yeah realistically <laughs> I, and i love and hate david tennant's character in this movie he plays like a uh las vegas gothic yeah. vampire slayer on stage like the fake one of those guys like a fake magician kind of and he's cool he's fun but like also a little over the top little, yeah a little bit over it's the too top. much um but again it could have been a great movie but the cast is really good that's great cast, i mean yeah. them too and then we have um oh, what's her name from hereditary I forgot her name Tony Collette. Yeah, Tony Collette's yeah. in this as yeah. well. She plays uh, Anton Yeltsin's mother. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's a good time. I think most people would enjoy it if they watched it. For sure. Lights off. You'll have a good time. Okay, now we're moving on to our next film, Dr. Sleep. This is the last one. Directed by 2019, directed by Mike Flanagan. Years following the events of The Shining, a now adult Danny Torrance must protect a young girl with similar powers from a cult known as the True Knot, who prey on children with powers to remain immortal. When I saw the trailer for this, I was like, I do not want to watch a remake. I mean, a sequel to The Shining. I was like, I hated the trailer. I love Ewan McGregor, but I was like, F this movie. And then I, and then I was one night, I was like, it got good reviews and it did well. I was like, I rented it and I really liked it. I think that uh, Flanagan did an excellent job with it. It obviously you can't compete with Kubrick in terms of like the cinematography and the directing, but he definitely did his own thing with it. And I really liked this movie. Rebecca Ferguson is a great villain. She's excellent, and Ewan McGregor did an awesome job. I I really liked what Stephen King did with this story, what he did with Danny Torrance's character, and I just I just think they knocked it out of the park. And you explain the vampires. It's technically not the traditional vampires we know, but yes. they are technically vampires. But so, Stephen King's version. So it's a different style. So essentially, vampires you could just say broadly just suck the life force out of a person. So they suck the blood out of human beings. Yeah. And uh, Doctor Sleep, they suck the life force out of just the psychic powered children, basically. So basically, Danny shines, and so they're what they they call it the steam, which it's is like what, a gas. Yeah, so that releases out of the of the people of the of the children that they mm-hmm. attack and and basically consume their life force that way. So technically, they are vampires in a way. You know, they're consuming the life force of a human being, which you could say is is a vampire or yeah. like a succubus or something like that. Yeah, and I really love the the ex- extended powers that Stephen King brought into the story with how to shine, how Rebecca can and the girl interact through shining, and she can when she's looking for her. It's like really great, yeah. cool concepts, and even with um, Danny figuring out what's going on when he starts communicating with the girl through the wall, and then also going back to his past and. They did an awesome job of recreating the most famous parts of The Shining when I was gonna, he goes back yeah. to the hotel. I was, like, at first very skeptical of what it I would know, be like, too. but I, I think they did a solid job. Yeah, it's. I was really surprised, and they got this actor who looked a lot like Jack Nicholson and feel, felt like him mm-hmm. to play Jack, and then um, uh, the, they got another uh, actress and an actor to play the young him and, and then Wendy as well. And in, in the recreation of the sets, that was, like, when I was watching it, I was like, this is really cool, like seeing the recreation, mm-hmm. and he even did like uh, identical shots as well, um, like when he walks into the gold room. So I really walking up the stairs. Yeah, this movie really knocked me away. I mean, um, knocked blew, you away, blew me away. <laughs> um, with this, it was just very surprising. I was I was not expecting it to be this good. Yeah, it's a good time. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, the book is also excellent. Now we'll do our top tier Patreon shout out. Justin, Caleb Fleming, Michael Caranja. Riley McDonald, Nate Moore, Harry Roscoe, Caitlin Signorelli, Travis Ball, Nicola Simeona, Jacob Kostler, Josh Chetney, Dennis, Jorge Chavez, Caleb McFalls, Ken Ballin, Dennis, Aaron McArdle, Sal Guanera, Max Rosk, Justin T. Frank, Tyler McDowell, Lawrence Mertz, Grayson Younts, Cole Carroll, Christopher Tunnel, Tanner Teagarden, Madison Hadamio, Barrett Compton, Andy Walker, TJ Rollins, Andrew Luckler, 
Nick Sheridan, a.k.a. Sherry, Hunter Smith, Carter Brandon, Nicholas Ozaniak, Timon Hayashi, Caitlin, Coll- Caitlin Callahan, a.k.a. Sharktooth, Sarai Rogers, Charles McLaughlin, Brandon Smith, Ethan Storm, Devin Udarium, Lucas Key, Derek Noonan, William Calamano, Mariam Alley, Brooke Shanks, Stephen Gatos, Zach Kormanek, Simon Toots, Brittany Underwood, Jeremy Slattery, Jeremy Benavidez, Cody Moan, Samantha Steele, Frank Cariglio, Michael Kelly, David Coburn, Josh Coburn, Joe Lopez, Rachel Von de Heuvel, Kayla McCoy, Brian Barton, Archie Owens, Derek Perkins, Daniel, a.k.a. Just Dan the Man, Olivia Piccini, Megan Costa, Chris Farmer, Patrick Clausen, Desiree Clausen, Joanna Tronina, Anthony Lamparis, Colleen Medler, Matthew Fires, Britton Balmer, Spencer Pike, Gabriel Townsend, Anthony Farmer, Lauren Kimberly, Maxwell McCree, Hayden Hensley, Odin Childs, Evan Smith, Leslie, Casey McWheels, Amanda Hatfield, Tom Cullum two times, Adam Beardsley, Anthony DeMeo, Melissa Colguin, Andrew Hagen, Connor Bird, Andre Sanchez, Jojo Abundante, Janice, a.k.a. Jay Nice, Colin Cowart, and William Smith. Thank you so much to our top tier patrons, also our $5 and $2 patrons. You're all the best. We really appreciate all the support you guys give us. It's incredible to get all those notifications whenever you interact with us or we get new patrons. If you want to become a patron, go to patreon.com slash Raiders of Lost Podcast today. That wraps our vampire episode. Well, we right? gotta we gotta go. What is your favorite vampire movie? Oh, I, I'm gonna go with uh, "Let the Right One In." Good choice. What about you? I'm gonna go with. Hmm, which one should I go with? Blade. I'm gonna go. <laughs> Let the right one in as well. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's exceptional. Best. Yeah, it's the best. It's really, really good. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for tuning into this vampire episode. Our 25 favorite ones. Hope you enjoyed it. Let us know if you're watching on YouTube. Which vampire film, if it's on this list or not, is your favorite vampire movie? If you have any other suggestions for some spooky episodes, let us know. Thanks for tuning in. Become a patron at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Follow, subscribe, hit the notification bell wherever you're tuning in around the world. We appreciate you so much. We will do our top tier patron shout out on the next episode. So stay tuned for that, all you top tier patrons. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in to Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to subscribe if you're new. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. Find us on all audio streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find us. Find us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to check out one of these other videos right here for more content on our favorite films and breaking down all kinds of movie content. Thanks so much.